Hello everyone, Anita here and today I have a very special video for you because this video was actually not planned to be released. I was a bit um, in an experimenting mood. I wanted to see if I could record something on a different angle um, than normally. And I was also very early into my sketchbook challenge um, and I was afraid to paint. <laughs> That was I was really afraid to paint for a while because nothing really came out the way I wanted it to. So you will see me creating lots of paintings on these tiny A6 Canson uh, watercolor blocks because at some point when I just torn, I've torn so many paintings apart, I realized that perhaps it's not the most cost-effective way to paint because Irish paper is very expensive. So I bought these blocks for about three euro each. Um, I got a few of them so that I had backups. And um, I was actually really, really excited painting on them. They're not my usual smooth, hot press texture. They have a little bit of a grain. But all in all, you know, they I, I kind of like painting on them. And I have to say that um, for the longest time I couldn't paint on glued, on those like pre-glued blocks. Um, because I, I think I had a bad one <laughs> when I was a kid. And it, I had really big problems that, that that block I had when I was a kid it just was completely messed up. And it um, kind of threw a shadow on my any future paper choices I made. But this one is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I love it. I love that it's pre-glued. It's so easy. Um, I don't have to worry about taping it to the work surface. For those little paintings, it's just absolutely genius. So um, I will definitely look into buying more pre-glued blocks in the future. So what I'm painting here, um, this is a sketch I made of this mushroom forest landscape thing where every mushroom cap is kind of like a field where uh, star sheep are grazing. <laughs> the idea is that star sheep are taking um, Basically, that's why they spend their days, because they're star sheep, so at night they become stars. But during the day they have to, you know, get their energy back and, you know, they just graze on top of giant mushrooms, because that's that's how you do it. <laughs> it's just a simple idea. I was very obsessed with mushrooms at that time. And I really liked this sketch. I had a very clear idea of what I wanted to do with it. And I took a chance to create a painting out of the sketch. Um, I really, really had a problems. Every time I liked the sketch, once I started painting it, it just, it would be completely messed up. I was just, I just couldn't, it's like I, I completely lost my skill to paint. So I was very nervous doing this. And honestly, I, I was experimenting with creating videos uh, in different places because this is not my usual workspace. This is actually my living room and I was sitting on uh, At our dining table next to the window and I thought you know what? I'm just going to give it a chance I took out my camera I set up a tripod and I started recording without really thinking about light and Without thinking about whether or not I'm going to use this footage. I wasn't actually planning to do it and when I checked it uh, straight after recording, um, I hated it. <laughs> but a few weeks passed since then. And um, I looked at it again because I save it. I try not to delete any footage I ever made. And I liked it, surprisingly. So, and especially because this painting is rather a short. This is a small um, format and the painting itself is really easy, that's a very easy concept. So I could um, make a video um, that wasn't as uh, sped up as I normally would because the whole process took about an hour. <laughs> so I didn't have to speed it up completely. I could include uh, how I'm sketching. The only thing I didn't include was when I'm doing line art because um, you've noticed probably <laughs> at the moment I am into black outlines again. I just like it. Um, and so the black outline, um, you know, it's pretty much just repetition of the sketch, so I didn't do it. 
And um, if you've noticed, I'm painting with water brushes, another really big... This whole, pretty much, this whole process was about simplifying my painting. Um, I didn't need a, a cup with water, I just had water brushes. I was using my new watercolors, which I was still experimenting with at that time. So I was just experimenting with the water brushes, trying to have a bit more freedom while painting. So um, this is something here I've done. I just I'm laying a water um, with the bigger brush. Uh, something I'm never going to do again because it's way too time consuming. It's actually easier to just use a regular <laughs> brush and a cup of water. Um, but yeah, this this whole pretty this whole painting process is pretty much an experiment for me. And you can see I'm very reluctant with painting. As I've said, I was really nervous about painting. I was so afraid of messing it up. Um, of course, th there was not really too much of a pressure of, oh, I have to make a video. Um, it has to come out good because I don't have another go. Uh, the video has to come out. Um, but because I was doing this video only for myself, so that pressure was kind of gone. But then again, I was really afraid that if I messed up this painting, I would be going backwards into... I just re regained a little bit of self-confidence in my sketchings and ideas and I was... I re you, you have no idea how many paintings I've torn apart. <laughs> so, so many. Well, I, was, I just messed up every single one of them. And so I really didn't want to go there because I just started regaining that self-confidence and I was afraid that if I messed this one up, I would just be going back, you know, to to step one or, you know, back to the beginning again. Um, once again, to oversimplify this whole painting, I'm using uh, mainly two colors. Uh, I'm using my, my all-time favorite ultramarine blue. And this ultramarine blue is um, from Schminke? It's the, in any way, it's that ultramarine fine. So it doesn't have almost any granulation. I love it. And the color I'm using now is my new absolutely favorite yellow. It's the Queen Acridone, Ro uh, that used to be my favorite, uh, Queen Acridone Gold. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, so uh, that's another, I didn't have to worry about color choices. I just knew I wanted to use that blue and that yellow together and, and just see where it takes me. Just do the best I could with it. I'm using also a little bit of just random brown at some point um, because I wanted to make the... Uh, so that I don't lie here. I think I was making the wooden parts brown. But it was so little that I didn't even consider it part of the painting much. I was just very in love with the blues and the yellows. I... This, there's just something really, really amazing and magical about the combination of these two colors. I, I'm, not, I'm not, of course, talking about blue and yellow. It's just this ultramarine blue with the Queen Acridon gold. I love it. I'm, I was so in love with it. So, so far, so good. Everything is coming uh, together nicely. I'm just building up the colors to create a bit more depth. The illusion that there is more, <laughs> more mushrooms than there really are. Um, and I was really worried about how I'm going to make, you know, the mushrooms in the back, they're pretty easy. They're just a bunch of dots and little splatters. But the closer I get, of course, I get those um, more refined shapes. And the problem here was I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a bit more of a negative space kind of deal or just paint them darker or just wait and come back with a blue, uh, with a white gouache to get back more of those details. When you have a problem with with painting, um, I wouldn't call it an art blog, but just I, I really had a problem with painting. When you have that problem, those decisions are really, really problematic <laughs> because you're constantly questioning your, your decisions. Will this mess up that what I'm seeing here? Because I was really liking what I was seeing and um, in my experience, if I like something midway, it's not gonna come out, come out, you know, pretty in the end. Every single painting, um, okay, let's uh, almost every painting that I've painted in my life, 
that I liked midway never came out good ever. If I hate something completely in the middle of the painting, if I hate it, if I can't look at it and I push forward, that's when they actually came out really uh, come out really good. But when um, at this time, as I've said, I was t- tearing apart, tearing apart a lot of paintings. And I really didn't want to do it with this one because I liked it. But my heart was very, very heavy just because of that. Because I was thinking that, oh, I like it now. I'm going to hate it later on. But I was taking my, my time with it. As you can see, I'm not really rushing that much. I'm just layering the color. Layering and layering and layering. Um, just building up the intensity. Uh, getting a little bit of texture actually into it. Not too much. But as you... Uh, if you've watched more of my videos, you know that I'm a big fan of flat washes. Now, this seems to be a problem lately. I don't like flat washes anymore, at least not that much, or not as much as I liked before. I like my washes to be a bit more loose right now. As you can see, I'm just dabbing, 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 dabbing. That's pretty much all I'm doing. I'm not really... Um, at least I wouldn't call it. I'm not sh- like shading, not really smoothing anything. I'm just dabbing that paint and seeing where it takes me. Of course, you know, when you're working with a water brush, eventually you're going to get more water than paint. So it kind of blends itself out, you know, by itself. <laughs> but just dabbing. <laughs> and um, surprisingly enough, I- I'm actually really happy with the effect. Uh, so I-, I knew that I was going in the right direction. So here I'm putting a little bit more of the blue uh, in the sheep. Just trying to pull that color of the sky a bit lower. Uh, I really love the star sheep. They're so simple and so derpy. But um, I don't know. They just they just add that little bit of magic that I like in my pictures. Um, so I'm just trying to add a little bit of a fur, <laughs> I suppose, to them. They have this very curly fur. Um... But I'm not really worrying too much about over rendering it, I suppose. Just adding just a little bit of dabbing <laughs> here and there. Dabbing is, is um, I dab paint, I swear. This is all I'm doing. <laughs> so here I did something at first I thought would be a mistake. I've decided to add that blue on top of yellow just to get a bit more of shading. And the first strokes were just so ugly. And I was like, no, see, exactly, exactly. This is what I was afraid of. That I would overdo it. I would overdo it and that painting would come out bad. But, <laughs> big but, um, I'm really trying my best not to give um, to that need of, of tearing the paper anymore. I was really trying my best not to, you know, get disheartened, just keep continuing painting, just see where you can get with it, because um, I'm trying to encourage everyone not to ever give up on their paintings, so I have to, I have to do the same. It's hard, you know, um, because you see that there's just, it's not working, but you have to figure it out, because otherwise, uh, you know, you're not going to paint anything. And so here I'm just trying to add a little bit of shading underneath the mushrooms, just to add a bit more of that blue on top of yellow. Sometimes when you make a mistake, uh, or at least something that you feel is a mistake, try to repeat it more <laughs> so that it looks um, almost like you did it on purpose. I mean, I'm of course talking about my mistakes here, but nobody has to know that this was a mistake. So I'm just adding the shading. I'm adding more blue on top of the things I've already covered. <laughs> just trying to build up the sh- shadows. And surprisingly, um, it's, it's looking pretty good. But I felt like it wasn't there yet. I, I needed a bit more of that blue. And so I did a very, very controversial decision. I made, I made it a controversial. I can't speak. I made a decision to just cover the whole bottom of the painting uh, with a blue wash and just try to 
cool it down a little bit, I suppose. Um, and build it into that, just basically make a gradient so that it's, it um, disappears into the yellow. Because I felt that the uh, bottom of the painting was way too warm. There was not enough contrast, there was not enough, just that blue. The blue was just in the sky and it, it didn't feel like the two uh, were connected, the top and the bottom. And so I decided to just build up a little bit of the uh, of the shadow. Because when you think about it logically, you know, with those big mushroom caps, the whole bottom under the mushrooms would be uh, in, in the shade. And because of that, you know, the mushroom caps are a little bit more visible and... I can start working on 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 them, <laughs> working on making them pop. Uh, so here I decided that the mushroom caps were not um, yellow enough. They were not yellow enough. I wanted them to pop even more. Uh, but as you can see here, look closely. I'm not really paying too much attention to adding details that much. Uh, I'm just scribbling. I'm just really scribbling, keeping it really loose, really. Um, not worried about filling in every single space, leave some white space, something that I've never done before. But this time it just felt right. I just liked that bit more interest that it adds to the painting, especially when it's such a small painting, such a simple one. Something that catches your eye is that uneven line. Uh, it's just another point of interest. Oh yes, here is the little bit of brown that I'm using. <laughs> to make the um to make the, the wooden walkways because every single mushroom is connected to one another with a wooden walkway. I don't know how that would work with sheep, but I just, you know, I've decided not to care for that much. And so as you can see here I'm building the intensity of the yellow mushrooms. I am really in love with the quinacridone gold um that's definitely my favorite color at the moment, next to ultramarine blue, of course. Uh, I rarely have colors that I love so much. Uh, so the fact that I'm just, I'm just fascinated by the color itself, the way it changes from that very, very bright yellow to a more of a, I would call it even like, like a sepia, brownish, kind of almost brownish color. It's just, I love that transition. I love how it changes like that and it's definitely worth all the money I spent on that color because this color was crazy expensive. And I also love how it changes a little bit into more of a muted, almost like a yellow ochre tone. You can see it happening in that painting, which I really, really love. You can see once it dries, it becomes a bit duller, dull, my God, duller. <laughs> a little bit more dull and a little bit more uh, earthy? I don't know. I'm, I'm really, really loving this color. And that was uh, one of the very first paintings when I was noticing that. So um, it just, I was experimenting with it. I was experimenting with that color, seeing where I can take it. And I was liking what I saw. I wasn't, as you can see here, I'm trying to uh, color the character, but I wasn't really feeling it that much. I mean, it's a very, very teeny weeny character. So I didn't feel that it needed that much. The majority of this painting is in the mushrooms, the sheep, and the colors, especially the colors. And um, yeah, so we're nearing the end of the painting process. Uh, the light wasn't that good anymore, so I did not record the adding, the adding of the white details, which are a must in every single painting I make. So you can see it just a little bit, um, just here and there. But uh, I've done that to every single mushroom and I've added detail to the sheep. And f as, as per usual, when I add white details to my paintings, they just make everything so much more magical. <laughs> so here is a closer look at the finished piece. And this piece was a big breakthrough for me. Of course, I had my ups and downs uh, since then. I'm still uh, very reluctant about painting in general. Um, I have that anxiety about <laughs> thinking of paintbrush and painting, but this painting was a first one in a while that I finished, that I liked, and that was I just couldn't stop looking at it. It was such a simple concept, such a simple painting, but 
it was a step forward so i hope you've enjoyed this video as well if you did please give it a you know a thumbs up and uh, leave me a comment so i know what you think about it so yeah once again thank you so very very much for watching i will see you in the next video bye